brief presentation this is a brief presentation on role of flexible uh, ureterinoscopy in management of renal calculus in anomalous kidney uh anomalous kidneys are classified broadly on the basis of uh, abnormal ascent of kidneys that is lie uh, renal fusion anomalies and rotational anomalies this uh, basically ranges from 1 is to 300 to 1 is to 1000 diverse why flexible uh, ur scopy is becoming an attractive option uh, because of the uh, less invasiveness because there are newer generation uh, ureteroscopes which are small caliber they are uh, flexible with higher degree of flexion and deflection uh, capabilities the uh, availability of holmium laser lithotripsy and uh, various accessories like uh, ureteral access sheets nitinol baskets and graspers the technical difficulties in the use of flexible ureteroscopy in anomalous kidneys uh, the course of the ureter is not straight pelvic ureteric junction may be tight or there may be coexisting uh, pelvic ureteric junction obstruction a uh, long length of the flexible ureteroscope remains outside the urethra uh, particularly in the pelvic kidneys which could be difficult to manipulate the flexible scope has to be negotiated uh, awkward angles one at one at the puj and other at the infundibulo pelvic junction so this uh, angle uh, is extremely acute in case of the inferior calycial stones in case of uh, pelvic ectopic kidney the course of ureter may be tortuous in horseshoe kidney there may be high insertion of ureter and in mal rotated kidneys the pelvis may be slightly anterior or posterior uh, and this <laughs> variations makes negotiating the pelvic ureteric junction difficult these are a few studies which are uh, comparing the use of uh, flexi ure uh, flexible ureter rhinoscopy for uh, calculus in uh, anomalous kidneys the first study was published by weiser et al uh, it was a case series in eight patients with uh, four horseshoe kidneys and four ectopic kidneys with stone up to 2 cm they reported the use of ureteral access sheet to straighten the tortuous uh, ureter uh, relocation of the stone to more favorable location that is from inferior calyx to middle calyx or upper calyx and extraction of fragments rather than just uh, breaking it and uh, uh, putting a dj and uh, allowing it to remove by itself so extraction active extraction of fragments leading to overall successful uh, success rate of 75% with uh, none of the patient requiring uh, other auxiliary treatment molimard et al uh, reviewed 17 patients with horseshoe kidney they used ureteral access sheet with automatic flow irrigation at 100 cm per water to improve the visualization they also advised patients on forced fluid intake post operatively to facilitate passage of small fragments however staged uh, flexible urs was needed in larger stones and those in difficult location with overall success rate of 88% boskert et al uh, reviewed 26 patients with pelvic ectopic kidneys they uh, use the same stone relocation and dusting method by holmium laser uh, ureteral access sheet was not used uh, in this cases because uh, all the cases were pelvic ectopic kidney they had short tortuous ureter with abnormal course and insertion of ureteral access sheet uh, seemed to be traumatic and cause serious ureteral injuries uh, as per the author so they didn't use any uh, ureteral access sheet in any of the patients the scope was advanced over the guide wire to the collecting system and despite higher degree of flexion deflection capability of newer generation ureteral endoscopes a high ureteral insertion and lower calycial localization of the stone within the pelvic ectopic kidney were uh, the factors that were challenging during the procedure although the treatment was successful in 84% of the cases uh, it failed in patients with unfavorable infundibulo pelvic anatomy Ogus et al uh, used uh, flexible urs in 24 patients with isolated anomaly of rotation excluding a horseshoe and ectopic kidney they used semi rigid urs to passively dilate the ureter first and then place the uh, flexible urs with the help of ureteral access sheet and this resulted in stone free rates of 75% in one stage and 83% overall uh, stone free rates Uh, there is a urgulu et al uh, who uh, used the uh, flexible urs in 25 patients with anomalous kidney with one patient with cross fused ectopia they suggested the use of pediatric uh, 
uh, uh, ureteral excess sheath of size 9.5 to 11.5 cm in pelvic kidneys to overcome the difficulties of short tortuous ureter. And uh, hence they achieved stone free rate, uh, still they achieved stone free rates of only 64% with single therapy and with second session 76% and overall clearance rate was 88%. Uh, another study uh, reviewed the outcomes of ESWL versus flexible uroscopy in 67 patients with horseshoe kidney with similar patient and stone demographics. They recommend placing the patient in slight frontal lumbar position to encourage the stones to fall in upper calyces. Uh, so it will be easier to uh, uh, remove. They also used ureteral access sheet, reposition lower pole stones, used automated flow irrigation and place the ureteral stent as well as ureteral, uh, ureteral catheter uh, in all the patients to maximize the drainage post-operatively. The stone uh, free rates in this group was 73% in uh, flexible URS uh, group and 47% uh, in ESWL group with no significant difference in the complication rates. These two are Indian studies. One is from Nadia uh, Singh et al. presented outcomes of flexible URS group in 25 patients. Uh, with various renal anomalies and stone less than two centimeter. Uh, they also used similar techniques, that is relocation of stone to favorable position, laser uh, settings to dusting, and uh, complete clearance was achieved in 88%, with three patients requiring two stage and one patient requiring three stage. Uh, all the patients in this study group were given alpha blocker post-operatively and uh, encouraged to increase the fluid intake. Another study, Indian study, that is Bansal et al., they treated nine patients of horseshoe kidney and lower calycial stone with flexible URS. And uh, they used the ureteral access sheet to optimize the vision, uh, kept and to keep a low intrarenal pressure and extract the fragments. In cases with uh, where ureteral access sheet placement was not possible, they uh, just stented and planned the patient for second procedure. Uh, with stone dusting laser setting, the initial and final stone free rates were 67 and 88% respectively. So comparison of flexible URS with PCNL and ESWL in management of stones in anomalous kidneys. Uh, the advantage of ESWL being non-invasive and avoids the need for anesthesia. The failure of ESWL has been associated with focusing difficulties due to anteriorly located renal pelvis or medial calysis masked with vertebra, a requirement for the supine position, uh, renal malrotation, ectopic pelvis, uh, fused lower pole, high insertion of ureter and stasis, even the, after the fragmentation, the, uh, the rate of expulsion would be low because of the stasis due to vascular variations or drainage disorders. Uh, there is a study here at all who reported their experience of ESWN in 198 patients uh, with a stone, uh, mean stone size of 13.5 uh, mm. The overall stone free rates were 72% with 3% of patients developing skin stress. Yeah. Very little clinical benefit of offering more than two sessions of ESWL and multivariate analysis found that stone burden, stone position and patient body mass index. Yeah. 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 PCNL, higher stone free rates were achieved compared to ESWL, but with higher risk of associated hotting. Anatomical variations and abnormal relationship to the Hello. Yeah, hello. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, there is a uh, bit uh, network problem, I think. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Carry on. so achieved higher stone free rates compared to ESWL, but there is also higher risk of associated complications due to anatomical variation and abnormal relationship of the adjacent organs, particularly the bowel. So there was increased risk of hydrogenic injury due to the percutaneous excess in PCNL. Also, the uh, excess tracts were often longer. The abnormal vasculature was also common. That must be considered in the pre-op plan. Uh, Simon et al. reviewed 15-year outcome of all patients who underwent surgical treatment for horseshoe kidney 
Of the 55 patients identified, the majority, that is 85%, underwent PCNL with stone free rates of 77% after a single procedure. And Tepler et al. analyzed factors out, affecting the outcomes of PCNL in 53 patients with horseshoe kidney uh, with a mean stone size of 28 mm. Initial and final stone free rates were 66% and 90% respectively. While auxiliary treatments increased the stone free rate, the only factor affecting the success rate on multivariate analysis was stone multiplicity. Uh, this is a, uh, this is only one of the study I found which compared all the uh, uh, methods together with PCNL uh, and flexible URS. Uh, Argin et al. who reviewed 101 patients in over a period of 10 years with urolithiasis and anomalous kidneys. Uh, flexible URS was used for less than 2 cm, PCNL for more than 2 cm, and laparoscopic pyelolithotomy for large stones. The overall stone free rates for horseshoe kidney in flexible UR scopy group was 72% compared to 90% in the PCNL group. However, 14, percent, uh, 14 patients in the PCNL group required a second procedure. In the ectopic kidney group, uh, flexible UR scopy was compared to laparoscopic pyelolithotomy, although all the stones in laparoscopic pyelolithotomy group were in the renal pelvis. The stone free rates achieved were 83% and 100% uh, respectively with flexible uh, UR scopy and laparoscopic pyelolithotomy. Finally, stone free rate for isolated rotational anomalies was 75% and 83% and the overall stone free rate for flexible UR in all the anomalies combined was 76%. Tips and practical stepwise guidance which is derived from all the studies is that uh, it is better to perform a semi-rigid UR scopy prior to flexible UR scopy to passively dilate the ureter and using a ureteral access sheet if the ureter anatomy allows it is better and choosing a smaller length uh, in pelvic kidneys. In ectopic kidney, it should be adjusted to mid or lower ureter or in a position such that the scope can flex into the pelvic alignment system. Uh, relocation of the stones from unfavorable position to more favorable position adjusting the laser settings to stone composition, but dusting seem to be the preferred method of stone treatment. Fragment retrieval and stone clearance is better to increase the stone free rates. Learning points, flexible UR scopy is an indispensable option in the armamentarium of uh, urologist for managing renal calculus less than two centimeters in kidneys with anomalies of life, fusion and rotation. Uh, the flexible URS has the potential to offset the anatomical, physiological and technical challenges of stone clearance. It can also offset the low clearance rate of ESWN and high complication rate of PCNL. Uh, Ureteral uh, access sheet is an important tool to overcome the anatomical challenges of anomalous kidneys, but it should be placed appropriately considering the angulation of calyx. Too high placement can also be counterproductive. Uh, baskets and lasers are indispensable accessories for flexible URS in anomalous kidneys. Thank you. Hey, I, I, I want to raise some questions here. Yes, sir. How can you say that flexible ureteroscopy is an indispensable option? Looking at the data that is available, look at it very critically, okay? These are all anomalous kidneys. Luckily for us, the incidence of these kidneys are low. Yes, sir. The incidence of stone disease in these kidneys are higher. Rotational anomalies and drainage of these kidneys are poor. And therefore, if you use flexible scopy and leave fragments inside the kidney, you have not told me what has happened to these fragments after two years. Have they grown bigger? Have these recurrences happened? You can't leave fragments. Drainage is also poor in these kidneys. Yes, so, I am arguing, arguing that flexible uteroscopy may be an attractive option, but it is not the best option for these kidneys. Yes, sir. That is the one of the learning points that fragments should not be left. They should be active. I mean, you can't say that. Fragments will be left. You can't access these kidneys. You can't access these calices all the time. So fragments will be left. Look at the data that is there. The average success rate is about 75%. Yes, sir. But that's all there is. So you have to say that this is an option. What we also have is we don't have a short flexible ultrasound. Some company must make a short flexible uteroscope. It may be possible that the use of that may be much lesser, but you can use a short one even for the lower ureter or something in between. No? So you can have one ureteroscope which is shorter than the others. 
How did they make a short semi-rigid? Originally, when wolves came out, they made a short semi-rigid one. They had the long one for the upper ureter and pelvis. So they should make. They should make one shot so that it can angle and get inside. As he said, especially in a female, most of the scope is outside. So the, you know, fiddling around with all this may be difficult. So the ergonomics may be better for somebody with a short URS. I don't know why a company has not made a short URS. Maybe not economical. But if you're doing so many in a large institution, if there are, if you have to develop the expertise, maybe it may be better. I don't know. So to me, to me, a better option would be to take the stone out directly. Take the stone yes. out directly. Either you do PCNL and take it out, or you do open surgery, laparoscopy, whatever you want to take it. Out. Compared to all these procedures, flexible uteroscopy is far inferior when compared to health, in my opinion. I don't do stone surgery, but looking at the data, it is far. Patients must be one very clearly. Very attractive option. It's an attractive option. Go through that, per day, maybe one sitting, two sittings. Stone driving me left behind. That's my case. Take on it. Oh, you can argue in a different way. See, the shockwave treatment was done for ectopic kidneys. The results are known. The flexible electroscopy, I compare it to a shockwave, is an open shockwave. See? And the results are superior to shock wave lithotripsy because you are doing the fragmentation under vision and with a better technology, which and you know exactly what is the fragment size. Fragments, wherever they are, they will find their path to the bladder and go on. We cannot say that all the, the fragments will remain. And if it is remaining, what our procedure we are going to do, and the recurrence is going to happen, and recurrence is not solely due to the residual fragments, except in an infected system or infection story. Accessing the uh, anomalous kidney, act, this can be is a contentious issue. We don't know which kidney, ectopic kidney, anomalous kidney has an easy access which kidney has a different difficult axis. None of these papers will throw a light on that. Having a stent is paramount before doing flexible electroscopy. The length is though questionable, but many of the times you may not be able to use an access sheet. And if you are going to use an access sheet, there will be a hindrance on your scope movement. Because you have to manage two things. One, whatever size of the access sheet currently available, maybe it will be longer in an ectopic system, in a pelvic kidney setup. So a lot of times you may not have to use access sheet and because most of these are pre stenting patients. The problem is the damage to the scope. And, and that is what makes people fear, fear, fearful to use flexible electroscopy as an option. I do agree that you have a better stone clearance with open stone surgery and laparoscopic stone surgery and, uh, and PCNL. But why these procedures have gone out of the way in stones? If they have a better stone, then almost everybody should be whacking up. No, if there is a large pelvic stone sitting there, Go and do a laparoscopic pyelolithotomy. It is a good learning technique for each and every one. But why everybody does these things? So why the rationale in stone surgery has shifted away, the focus has shifted away from these procedures to works and flexible scope. Yes, the only reason why I think it has shifted away is that whatever procedure you do, you cannot Guarantee that stone will not form. <laughs> well, you leave a stone behind. So don't talk with that. I've got 100% clearance and I'm doing this blah blah on a stage. Accept your limitation. You cannot do it. You cannot fight sometimes nature. Yeah, actually, in all, in all Institute, so, Sujata, in All India Institute, when we went for our posting, Sarinder Mansing, late Sarinder Mansing used to be we were doing all open surgery for stones. 
My kidney will have about 10 stones. You can count 10. If you count 10, there are more. I'll tell you this one. Because they'll be hiding behind here and there. He'll take out eight. He'll get tired. So we know that there are residual stones. What happened? Yeah, actually, sir, uh, is nobody oh, reports sorry. the complications of flexible urethroscopy and that is, now it has become the main uh, toy and to be uh, highlighted everywhere, but uh, uh, the people who see the complications of others know what's happening. That is the truth. Secondly, I also agree that PCNL or laparoscopic guided PCNL is a better option, though it has complications. And we had written one paper about temporary ascites occurring, of urinary ascites occurring after it. But if you only compare stone-free rates, then I agree with Ganesh. Uh, if you want to uh, go ahead with two procedures and take the possibilities of having a flexible and bearing the cost and uh, patient insists that she should not have a scar and not have uh, anything, only do it uh, right through the urethra, then flexible is a choice. So I think both are choices, but it depends on various uh, aspects. So that's why I think the, the recent English in uh, medicine is very attractive. The words which are used are shared decision making. For everything we can use that, and we can argue our uh, treatment process. Very true. Very true. Yeah, but sir, there are patients who argue because this is uh, the era of internet. They read about it. They are misguided about it. They are not told about complications. When complications occur, they are referred to a public hospital. You see, the problem is, if there are two people, both are doing flexible ultrascopy. The patient is insisting that, I want no scar. Doctor A, urologist A, knows his limitations. But he knows that urologist B is a better fellow. So what he said, he packs his patient up to urologist B. Urologist B is a smart fellow. He's done many of these. He's seen the complications. He knows it. So he spells out everything to the patient. The patient is shocked. I said, how's that? I don't know. But A has sent it to B because B is superior. He's told the patient, okay, I got. This is what happens. If you pack a patient off to somebody else because you are unhappy to deal with the patient, you have not told them the whole truth. So help you God situation. The patient hears the problems. What is the story? What is the story? You will be all right. How will you be all right? When you hear the stories, of, when you hear the problems, then suddenly everybody becomes aware. Oh, I see. It's like that. So that's, that's the other problem. A patient, as Bobby said, shared decision making. <laughs> must accept that, you know, that uh, there are limitations. Your kidney is like this. It's not anybody's fault. You know? You know, you got a stone, your kidney is like this, and this is all we can do. So you make a choice. Another thing, I think stenting uh, is necessary. Otherwise, the, those ureters can be narrow, and that, that uh, Karuna is not I am arguing for the sake of arguing. I know that everybody will do flexible uterus, but always there is a flip side to the story. We must all understand it. We are all so-called uh, follow the science. So we must know where things are. There is no doubt that all these minimally invasive procedures have helped a lot for the patient. Many kidneys which would have been removed and thrown in the bucket are now saved, irrespective of the lousy function also. Anyway, that's a different story. That's how it is. Yeah, but uh, the number of ureteric injuries which I have seen are uh, really high, especially in private practice. In KM also, uh, we are seeing them. And uh, they cause very bad infection in the retroperitoneum. I don't know whether, uh, how in presence of an access sheet, uh, the retroperitoneum gets infected. Maybe it's because of some injury which is missed or something. Because this has been... Uh, it's like there would be no reason if the flare, if the access sheet is in place and if it is properly placed, then why a flexible urethroscope and after that it is stented, it should cause infection in the retroperitoneum. I have a feeling a lot of this is because of reuse. Reuse, yeah. 
reuse it. Yes, sure. Obviously, nobody reuses an access sheet. Everything is thrown out. We have to record everything, no? That's our problem. Yeah, I think that we have to accept. Yeah. There is no doubt. Yeah. If we re reuse an access sheet, there's always an issue with uh, accessing the system. Even though the uh, Oliver tracks a paper talks about classification and then outcomes of the movies and there are evidences for that. But then when we look at these complications, we must accept that in, we cannot uh, uh, take shelter under, under those papers, but we need to exercise caution when we use these papers. Okay, do we have a case? Yes, yes sir, we have a case. Are you having a presentation? Yes, huh? yes. There's a presentation from here. No, no, from our side. No, no. There is one presentation 